West Wilton, New Hampshire. Here in this house, a giant of the faith was born. His name is Uriah Smith. At a young age, he developed an infection in his left leg. And unfortunately, at the age of 12, he had to have it amputated just above the knee. This took place just up the road. On the kitchen table, it lasted 20 minutes and no anesthesia was used. Like his sister, he was gifted with a brilliant mind and attended Phillips Academy in Exeter, one of the foremost schools of his day. When his father died suddenly, it caused him to think about his own spiritual life and study thoroughly the Adventist message after having lost his zeal after the disappointment of 1844. He went to hear James and Ellen speak in Washington, New Hampshire for the first time and was impressed by the explanation given for the great disappointment. He went home and studied his Bible for three months before making a commitment to renew his faith and rejoin the believers. Soon after, he turned down a lucrative job offer and moved here to Rochester, New York to work for the newly relocated Review and Herald offices. He was 21 years old at the time and would go on to work for the Review and Herald for 50 more years. At the age of 23, when it moved to Battle Creek, Michigan, he became the resident editor. The importance of the printed word at this time of history cannot be overstated. The churches that were scattered around the country would only hear from the traveling itinerant speakers what was happening elsewhere every several weeks. Uriah Smith as the resident editor-in-chief of the Review and Herald was like the pastor of the whole church as people would read his editorials and find out the news of what was happening elsewhere, such as who had died. The Adventist Review was like the glue that kept the early church together. However, he was more than an editor and preacher. Uriah Smith had eight patents during his life, one of which was a school desk that earned him $3,000. He also patented a significantly improved version of the prosthetic leg. He was also a prolific writer, completing 18 books during his lifetime, the most famous and well-read being Thoughts on Daniel and Revelation. In 1903, tragedy would strike the Review and Herald as it was burned down. The insurance only covered a fraction, and instead of rebuilding here in Battle Creek, the decision was made to relocate to Washington, D.C. Uriah Smith, writing shortly after this tragedy, said, In the shadow of great calamity, we are of good courage. The Review and Herald under Uriah Smith's leadership had gone from a small Washington hand press to having hundreds of employees using the best equipment and printing in six languages. On the 6th of March, 1903, he was walking to work here in Battle Creek when he suddenly collapsed. He was rushed to be seen by a doctor, but unfortunately he died a few hours later from a large stroke. A special issue of the Review and Herald was published with his picture on the front, as well as a poem by his late sister Annie that she had written years previously about himself. He was also a hymn writer and his most famous hymn rings with words that echo to our time today. O oh brother be faithful, soon Jesus will come, for whom we have waited so long. Oh, soon shall we enter our glorious home and join in the conqueror's song. Oh, brother, be faithful, for why should we prove unfaithful to him who has shown such deep, such unbounded and infinite love who died to redeem us his own?